Hey, what is going on, crypto people? It is the Crypto Siege with another day in my life and the crazy life that is the digital asset space. Good freaking evening. Happy Friday to you. Wow, what an event. What an event. We had a round table with some of the finest in the digital asset space from the Flair community. So we had content providers. We had um, signal providers. Uh, we had people who um, in the NFT space, uh, goodness gracious, Crypto Eddie was there. Mickey B. Fresh was there. Solomon was there. The, the That one, Darren Moore was there. Bully was there. Uh, yeah, what an awesome, awesome uh, event for sure. Blessed to uh, have been invited to hang out uh, for sure. We had a great talk about all things Flare Network. James Rule XRP was in the building, so it was uh, it was a really great event. Loved hearing from the NFT uh, uh, providers. I believe it's going to be eight 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 was an NFT provider, and um, it was another NFT provider as well. Who was it? Uh, not Moon Chaser. Sparkle Sparkles NFT platform as well. So really excited about that. We're going to talk a little bit about the Flare Networks. We're going to go with just a little bit of some things from their blog as well. Bro, Trey Hauser is in the building. What's good with you, bro? It's good to see you tonight. Uh, yeah, and so uh, my guy, South Texas Celsian, uh, dropped the word today. So I guess he probably got that from the AMA. Unfortunately, I could not get on the AMA today. Um, but I believe Polkadot is now available for U.S., investors as well to earn interest and they're starting out at eight percent so that is really really cool i have a few hundred dollars on the sidelines and stable i'm trying to decide what should i do I'm trying to really decide about that should i put it in that behemoth that is polygon.curve.finance or should i get some polka dot at the discount interesting stuff we'll see how it goes. We'll see how that goes for sure. But Flair is going to be a monster. Uh, what, you know, when I think about the fact that it's a level one entity, it's level one, what is going to come and want to build on the Flair networks? You know, uh, when I think about XRP and Stellar Light and Dogecoin, what other D apps, if you were, are going to build on this uh, Turing Federated Byzantine? Um, agreement network or mechanism or consensus. Who's going to come and why? What is that spark token? What is that entire ecosystem and the mechanism around it? What does it offer? And I just, you know, I hear about the real estate that that's coming, right? I, I find it fascinating that Gala Games decide, to, decided to come on this network. I find that to be very, very fascinating. Flare Finance made sense from smart contracts and DeFi is huge. That made sense to me that Flare Finance would come. Why Gala Games? Why the real estate? Um, why all these different platforms? Are they coming from different verticals, from different verticals and choosing to, to build on the Flare networks? And what that means to me is a lot of use cases for the Spark token, but also for XRP. What is it going to mean for XRP once it's minted as an F as an FXRP with smart contract capability and being interoperable. What is that going to mean for XRP? What other use cases and platforms are going to look to that FXRP? Um, I find that to be very, very fascinating. I really, really, really do. How valuable is that FXRP going to be? <laughs> we already know that trust line says, yeah, bring the FXX, bring those FXRP over here. Bring the F assets over here. We already know that Flare Finance, bring those F assets over here. But what else? What else? What else is going to say, you know, that's going to be able to tap into the awesome thing that is XRP from a smart contract and or DeFi perspective. Are you guys thinking about that? <laughs> I, I, the possibilities 
or endless. And you guys know that I've been really, I've been hopping on these DeFi platforms and participating uh, in a pretty big way. And I'm excited about what Flare Finance is going to be. There's certainly going to be a first mover's advantage to Flare Finance on Flare Network. There's currently 120 or so billion in total value locked in the DeFi space. What other DeFi platform is going to leverage Flare Network? So are you thinking about that? Are you thinking about that? What other platforms? How is, how is Flare Networks going to outdo Arbitrum? And optimism. How is it going to compete with Polygon? It's going to have to compete with Polygon. How is it going to do that? What are the things that it offers? Right? Can't just be the 0.001 in the fee. There's got to be something else. Or is it going to be four zeros in a one because it's on the ledger? Like what? It's, it's going to be very fascinating to see what's going to be the draw. For Flare Network, I'm fascinated by, fascinated by that. What are, what's going to be the many use cases for the Spark token besides delegating and, and, and wrapping and, and uh, using Spark for collateral for the agents? What else? What else? People already know about XRP. They know about how fast. They know about the ledger. They know about how inexpensive. What platform is going to say, man? In the smart contract world, I see all kind of poss all kinds of possibilities for XRP and Stellar Lumens, Litecoin, Doge. Do you understand what I'm saying? I, I, it's going to be massive, in my humble opinion. I truly, truly believe that. What's going on, Trevor Conte? Good to see you, my friend. Good evening, C's and Smash and Fam. Smash that like button, right? I know it's Friday night. Probably people are probably hanging out, but I gotta tell you. I got to tell you, it's going to be an interesting thing. Hey, Jeffrey, how are you, my friend? What's up, man? So is Spark being distributed this month? No, it is not. I don't know when it's going to. Um, the launch looks like sometime mid-July. So in terms of when the actual, um, it's coming, but I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's this month or not. I don't know when. They haven't announced kind of when. Uh, that is going to happen. I'm sure they will let us know when it is. Yes, it's still 15%. Yep. It is definitely 15%. So I just, I mean, goodness gracious. I took, I wrote something down. I want you to think about this from the blog, flare.xyz. It says, Flare Network is bringing each integrated chain together all on Flare. Or let me read it a different way. Bringing each integrated chain together all on Flare creates <coughs> creates unparalleled opportunities. Unparalleled opportunities. You know, there's a reason why Ripple invested in that company. And it's not because of a spark token that, you know, XRP holders were able to get. I don't. Ripple's not even able to get any. You know, they invested in them for a reason, and I'm beginning to believe wholeheartedly that the reason why we got these federated side chains coming out of David Schwartz's mouth is because they recognize the possibility that Flare Network represents. I <laughs> I really do believe that. I really do. So, man, I'm totally excited about that. Again, shout out to Crypto Eddie. Thank you so much for invi inviting me to hang out with all the all stars. Uh, that was a really cool hang. It was great to hear from the signal providers. It was great to hear from the NFT platforms. I know Hugo, um, you know, kind of did a video, introductory video as well um, that she's going to she's going to get to us um, soon enough. Uh, but yeah, very, very excited about that. It was good. It was cool to hang with Solomon and hang with uh, Darren and have James Rule on as well. And Mickey B. Fresh was, you know, helping to kind of moderate things as well. So it, it's exciting to see what is going to uh, happen. And I really do think there's something, it feels like there's going to be a cash flow that people are, uh, people are, are missing. I really do too. I really do think that. And I just got to tell you, people trying to sell you on a Roth IRA, 
<sighs> like, <clears throat> I got a question for you. In your Roth IRA, can you be both a lender and a borrower of your assets? Can you be, can you be both a lender and a borrower of your assets? I mean, some of you may be, you maybe have this Roth, this crypto Roth IRA. Can you be a lender and a borrower of your assets? Can you participate with your asset as a liquidity provider? Can you tap into and position yourself in the waterfall of transaction fees on platforms that have total value locked in the billions and some in the tens of billions of dollars in a Roth IRA. I'm not saying that Roth IRA is a bad thing, but it, there, it's just, there are next level things. There are next level things, right? <laughs> There are next level things, right? And I get there's some strategies around the Roth IRA without question. Without question. But can you be a lender and a borrower? Can you lend your assets? Can you borrow against them? Can you put them into DeFi if they're in that Roth IRA? You tell me. <laughs> you tell me. Is that the case? You know, you know. Uh, I mean, there's some old school ways that work, right? Like dividend paying, cash flow, uh, cash paying, uh, what is it? Cash value life insurance policy. That works. Without question, we have one. Without question, we have one. And we can borrow against our assets in that platform. We can borrow against it. Can you borrow against you're a Roth IRA. I, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering. Can you do that? Because if you borrow against your assets, when you take a loan against your assets, right, you can write off the interest on those assets as well. Right? You can write it. You can write the interest off on those assets as well. So interesting stuff. Interesting stuff. I know that one of the collateralized loans I did at 1%, um, I did it in actual dirty, nasty fiat. And the platform Celsius sent me a certified thing that they send the government and the IRS and the bank that this was a loan. That this was a loan against the assets. So don't put this in the um, ordinary income pile. You have to put this in another pile. You have to put this in another pile. So having your assets grow. And here's another thing too, that I find fascinating as well. If you have a certain amount of XRP, can you get more XRP without spending money in a Roth IRA? I'm, I'm curious. Does anyone know? And does anyone know GDLT? If you got your crypto in a Roth IRA, can you get more XRP on your XRP in a Roth IRA? Or do you have to spend money to get more XRP? How about this? Can you can you use the XRP in your Roth IRA as collateral? Can you use it to provide liquidity? Yeah, I don't know but I don't think so. So be careful. Uh, this is, this is 2021, right? And what someone did 30 years ago. Yeah, I don't know. Not that there aren't strategies around Roth IRAs. There are, there are, right? Roth IRAs and LLCs. You get things stacked up on one another. There are strategies around that. But this is 2021. You have an opportunity to be a liquidity provider. <laughs> you have an opportunity to create cash flow on a daily basis. 
So anyhow, what's going on, GDLT? It's good to see you. What's going on, Marquise? Good to see you, my friend. So I hope you guys are just, uh, you know, consider it, look into it, check the possibilities. When you when you, uh, when you you look into a crypto RIF IRA, when you look into one of those, when you look into getting one of those, I uh, definitely want to check out uh, Mark J. Kohler on YouTube. Definitely check him out. See what he has to offer. He has a, a lot more strategy than just transitioning, <laughs> transitioning your 401k into a Roth, right? You need some strategies, not a platform. You need strategies. You need a team around you to strategize, not just a platform to move your assets to and fro. You need a team behind it. You need a team behind what you're going to do. So, when you look into a Roth RA, look to the team. Like, is this a tax attorney? Is this an estate attorney providing this Roth RA? Or is it just a service that you got to figure some stuff out on your own? All right? You need a team, right? So, you know, definitely, definitely, definitely do your homework on that. Some stuff is old school. You do you know the pros and cons, the advantages and disadvantages? Because I, I believe firmly, I believe going forward, it is about cash flow and not asset appreciation. Asset appreciation alone is, is not the answer. Not for the crypto siege home. Cash flow. I want assets that I can I can leverage. Leverage. And hold that asset, right? Leverage and hold. In other words, be a lender and a borrower. Be a liquidity provider and position myself to take in fees because I hold assets that allow me to do so. Taxes are incidental. Like they're, to me, it's, I don't know. I don't know. But in any case, just cons you know, consider that. Look into it and see. I don't know. I don't know. I'm asking those questions because I don't know the answers. Maybe you guys know. There you go, Marquise. Good for you, my friend. Good for you. Right? You got to get set up in that stuff. Marquise said, here, uh, my tax guy helped me set up my mother in a law trust before she died. Right? You got to trust her important. It's an important part of that asset protection, right? You know, you maybe don't have to do those initially, but eventually you want to get to them, right? A few thousand dollars, but eventually you want to, you know, you want to rid yourself, your, yourself or probate uh, uh, challenges for your state. You definitely want to rid yourself of that madness for sure. It's a little work, a little work in trying to figure out, you know, how you're going to set up your, uh, your, living, your living trust and it's a little challenging. But it's necessary. Whoa, get out, get out, get out, get out. Trevor Lacante says the SEC stopped the Robinhood IPO. Whoa, I didn't know that. What? Wow. The SEC stopped the Robinhood IPO. It's delayed for now. I didn't know that. That is interesting. That is interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting for sure. No Tundra music review. I don't think so. I think this, the snapshot is uh, over. Um, I don't know if there's still time to maybe... Um, Mark J. Kohler? Marquise, K H K O H L E R, Mark J, he helped you. Um, I don't know if there's still. I think I think maybe even the ledger transition thing might be over as well. Um, uh, Tundra Music Review. Are you talking Mark J Cole or Marquise? Did I miss anyone coming in? What's going on, Jerry Wanaya? Good to see you tonight, uh, for sure. So, look, Flare Networks, guys, I hope you're 
strongly considering participating there. I think I think the uh, I think the possibilities of cash flow is really going to hit you. I really, really do. Who knows what the Spark token initially was going to be, but ninety days from the uh, from the launch, what could it be? what could it be? Six months from the launch, what could it be? Think about Uniswap and what happened there. Uh, it's going to be really, really interesting. I, I feel like there's a, just a, an ecosystem or a, a dynamic to that uh, flare network that asset appreciation, I don't think is going to be a challenge at all. But it's set up that those who chose to use the Spark token will benefit the most. And that's what Curve did, by the way. Curve, you know, they set up this one-year staking and then this four-year staking. Uh, and then, you know, um, they set it up in a way that you were certainly high, much more highly incentivized to, 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 to hold on to Curve for years and years and years and years. They set up a nice... Uh, a nice system. And now they do $22 million a day in transactions. In transactions. And I know that Curve is not, um, Flare Network is not Curve. I, I do, I totally get that. But this model is going to be built around the Spark token. What is it going to look like? These F assets. These F assets, it's going to be powerful. They're going to be powerful. And uh, there's something about first moves advantage that Flair Finance is going to be awesome. I hope they win. I hope they win. And putting together, putting together a model where people will want to use the Flair Finance platform. But Trustline is saying bring your F assets over there as well. What is that going to look like? Another option on Flare Networks and other options, I firmly believe for F assets are going to come to Flare Networks. Yeah, it's gonna to come to Flare Networks and someone's gonna get it right and uh, become the next Yearn Finance. Someone's gonna get it right and become the next Polygon, the next Curve. Someone's going to really kind of get it right. Uh, who's gonna be the next Decentraland? Is it gonna be 888 TNW? Is it going to be Sparkles, NFT? What's going to be the next uh, Metaverse project <laughs> coming to Flare Network? Uh, these are exciting, exciting things. Very fascinated by Gala Games and why they chose Flare Network. And it's, you know, it's, it, you know, it's, it's more than just owning the NFT. It's, I think it's bigger than that. I really do. And here we are early to it. Think about the people early, the curve, early, their Uniswap. Oh, you're saying, yeah. Oh, really? How was it? How was it, Marquise, working with Mark? He seems like an uh, interesting dude, interesting character, but I think he's hugely smart. And I know he hooked up with, um, he's partnered with the other guy. Uh, they're both um, kind of like best-selling authors. What's the other guy he's hooked up with? But I think, you know, if you're going to go IRA, uh, <laughs> go with the team, right? Go is it, it provides the same tax benefits, but uh, I think a team, going with a team, like tax attorneys and the state planners is... Uh, yeah, that's probably a better option now um, because they're, they're looking to protect the assets, right, uh, as a whole. Bro, bro, that's, oh, what's going on, Dakota? It's good to see you, bro. Appreciate you checking in, my friend. Looks like that one French or Italian bank is planning something with Flare Networks also. Exciting to see a bank that is diving uh, in deep. Yeah, 
It's I, I guarantee you it's about those F assets, Dakota. I guarantee you it's about those F assets. Think about just the two, you know, they're all great, all four of them. But think about uh, uh, the liquidity tokens like XRP and Stellar Women's. I just, I just, I think the world is going to, I think the world is going to be running to that F assets and what, we're, what, because it, because you can, we talk in scaling in not only just scaling, but also scaling in scaling and transaction throughput as well. Yeah. Yeah. It was something that Ethereum was just not able to do. And even with E2.0 still won't be able to do it in trans transaction throughput. Uh, so yeah, Flare Networks is going to be a big deal. Digital Funkster is in the building. How are you, my friend? Hey, see, Flare will be life changing, indeed. Yes, that's correct. Uh, Sal Patel, that is correct. DFLR is from Flare Finance. FLR is from Flare Networks. Compass Bank is BBVA. Was it BB? Uh, was it B? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know the bank, but that's very nice, Marquise. It's great to hear that. I've been really watching a lot of his stuff, and uh, it feels like um, someone to turn to um, who, who kind of gets the complete picture in terms of asset protection. And I think I think that's uh, it's important, uh, you know, to have someone like that on your team, right? Your state attorney, the tax attorney, the accountant, right? Uh, your personal lawyer, your private banker. I think, you know, um, those are all important to have as a team. Uh, just promoting uh, a Roth IRA for tax advantages is um, like second grade stuff, right? <laughs> right? Someone, you know, my mentor used to say to me, the reason why they make those desks so small in the second grade is so you can't fit into them when you're in your 40s. <laughs> right it's time to graduate so definitely 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 put yourself a, a team around you for sure that's great to hear man it's great to hear my keys it is really really good to hear what's the other guy that do you remember the other guy that he worked with that he's partners with they both wrote books and for the life of me i cannot remember his name right now but I'll, it'll come to me so, guys, you see what I'm saying? Let's let's go over a little bit of Flare Network here. Let me share this. So I was reading this thing here, and uh, I got to tell you, everything was really, really fascinating. Proof of stake can't. Proof of stake and variance can scale transaction through, but but existing implementations can't scale for value. In our opinion, proof of stake is more of a stop gap, stop gap than a solution. Flare is at its core a new way of scaling smart contract platforms that does not link the safety of the platform with the value of its token. Some really, really, really great stuff at Network Launch built on top of Flare is then a protocol to safely enable trustless issuance, uses, and redemption of XRP on Flare. This protocol is called FXRP. XRP safely and trustedly becomes FXRP on Flare, secured by Flare's native token Spark. XRP now effectively exists on a Turing complete network. And once their trustless interoperability, oper, interoperability with other networks is feasible, trustless interoperability with other networks is feasible, both through interoperability protocols such as po, uh, Cosmos and Polkadot. So you, just for me, that says that Polka polka swap and whatever cosmos got going on that xrp will be able to be added there for liquidity pools that's what it says to me define uh, as well via well-defined bridge protocols in short 
Flare can be used as a smart contract platform for XRP or as a trustless pipeline for XRP to other networks. In other words, the all these other networks that perhaps wanted to get their hands and take advantage of all the attributes of XRP are going to be able to do that. They're going to be able to do it. Furthermore, the general methodology of the X, F, XRP is extendable to any non-Turing complete token. And the ability to decide which other tokens to support and then extends the means to do so is built into the system and governance of the network. And when we're talking smart contracts and the likes, I just think I think there are, there are platforms and there are, um, there are D apps and there are entities longing to be able to take advantage again of the attributes of XRP. Now that it has smart contract capability and now that it has this way to kind of interact and uh, 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 with other networks, I think it's going to be an absolute, <laughs> it's going to be a game changer. I really, really do believe that. I really do believe that, guys, and I hope you get it as well. Let me see what I want to see from the beginning. I think it's just going to be a beautiful, beautiful thing. I think it's bigger than just the Spark token. I think major use cases for both Spark and the F assets on this platform. I really do. I hope you guys see that as well. Okay, Matt, their directed IRA company. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. For me too, Marquise, and I totally get what you're under, what you're saying. Uh, I, what I think of when I when, when I choose one, do I get a team or don't I? Do I get counsel or don't I? Do I get access or don't I? Right? And I think that's kind of really kind of um, I think that's, uh, I think that's a big, big difference. Do I get strategy advice or don't I, where do I get strategy advice? Where do I get, um, complete asset protection? That's what I personally, that's what I'm thinking personally for me in the crypto season. home. that's what I'm looking for. That overall, um, thing I talked with the CEO of, I trust capital is a smart guy. And a uh, uh, very nice guy. And um, so that's what I'm that's what I'm ultimately looking at. For sure. Again, I just w- I want to be in a position when it comes to Roth IRAs. I, you know, I want to be in a position to leverage the asset as best as I can leverage XRP as best as I can leverage it as best as I can. The, in my opinion, the days of buying and holding an, an, an asset and just putting it somewhere is so second grade. Right? I just think the whole digital asset space is evolving into something bigger than that, bigger than when moon. And I think bigger than taxes, personally. Okay, there it is right there. In regards to CBDCs, correction to my earlier statement, Siba Bank AG stated in a tweet, certainly interesting to do something on Flare Networks in the future is what they said. It is the French Central Bank. It is the French Central Bank. And I and Dakota, I said this earlier, I don't know if you're on, but I truly believe that Flare Networks was uh, was an eye opener, a, an a, a awakening, if you will. <laughs> uh, to ripple. I think the federated side chain proposal <laughs> was like their answer, ripple's answer, right? To other possibilities. So if you got a central bank saying they want to do something on flare networks, why do you think that is? 
it, it's not for NFTs, <laughs> right? It's not, you know, the French central bank is not looking to uh, 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 start gaming on Gala Games, right? <laughs> no, no, it's about them F assets and about the, in my humble opinion, and about this scalability in trans transaction throughput that comes with them on Flare Networks. Truly believe that. And I believe this federated side chain proposal from David Schwartz is the answer. Like, is their answer to Flare Networks? <laughs> Ripple has to have their own. Ripple don't own Flare Networks, right? <laughs> I think that's their answer. I really do believe it. Right? Uh, I truly do believe that. So for a central bank to say that they want to do something in terms of probably in reference to CBDCs on Flare Network, how do you think they're going to do that? Right, because Flare is on the ledger, right? And I just read interoperability there. So I believe entities will be able to tap into the genius that's the XRP ledger. I think they're going to be able to tap into the, the 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 behemoth that is F assets at scale. At scale. I don't know how private or not not private things will be for that central bank, but Think about that statement coming from the central bank. So it's going to be interesting to see uh, this trustless uh, ecosystem that Flare Networks has uh, represents, you know, without having, you know, being able to move value in a trustless manner. Um, I think it's going to be powerful. I think it's going to be powerful. And I think more and more people will get the appeal once they understand it. And people who own Spark, <laughs> I'm, I'm curious to see who's going to be an agent on this Flare network. Who's going to be that agent providing two and a half times the liquidity, taking in the whatever the burn fee is to mint F FXRP. I, I thought I thought it was 5%, maybe it's 3%. I, I read 0.1%, so I don't even know what it's going to be. But Who's going to be taking that in? Who's going to be the agents? It's very, very intriguing to see. And we're early. It's nothing. It's nothing like being early, having first moves advantage on a legit, not having to worry about rug pulls and any of that madness, right? Growing flare networks together, you know, participating with the Spark token, participating in flare finance if you choose to. Participating in trust line if you choose to be careful what you do with your F assets. Those are your assets. And by the way, you can always go back into XRP when you're ready. Again, owning XRP and leveraging it. You know, growing your portfolio tax free. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. It's so second grade. In my opinion, it really is. It's so second grade. Can I hold on to this asset and create thousands of dollars a month in cash flow? In cash flow, not asset appreciation, not in the value going up. Can I hold on to this asset and create thousands of dollars in cash flow on a weekly basis? That's the question. Now, if I can do that in a Roth IRA, cool. Show me the Roth IRA that's going to provide weekly cash flow for holding an asset. Show me that platform. Show me that Roth IRA right, that does that. If not, I'm taking my assets elsewhere. I want to create cash flow. I want to leverage and not liquidate my asset. Right? Yeah, it's it, it's evolving. The ecosystem is evolving. And if you don't understand DeFi, if you don't understand that. Maybe dive into it a little bit. I just would humbly submit to you that those self-directed, the, the Roth IRAs, they have 
They have a purpose, but it's, it's right. How can you create cash flow? How can you create cash flow? I, I have a friend uh, in crypto that's making four to five thousand dollars a week. A week. And still has his assets, not liquidating them. Four to five grand a week, not liquidating them. Right? And sure, yeah, look, we're all here for asset appreciation. We certainly want assets to appreciate, but when moon, are you liquidating? Are you, are you, are you, are you 100% out of the asset and now you got dirty, nasty fiat and you no longer have the asset? Hmm. When the option to hold the asset and have dirty, nasty fiat coming in in cash flow <laughs> is available. <laughs> second grade, second grade with the noontime nap. Indeed, bro. Indeed. Marquise, what are you saying, my friend? So are we saying that chain link? Chain link from Ripple will be linked to our IRAs to cash flow, possibly. Nope. I am not saying that. What I'm saying is currently that's not what Roth IRAs represent. They don't provide an opportunity for cash flow. They provide a measure for um, um, asset protection. But tell me about the cash flow. Tell me about, tell me, I want to know what cash flow looks like. I want to know what cash flow looks like. I want to know how am I positioned to take advantage of $120 billion in total value locked in transaction fees. Can I do that with my assets in a Roth RA? And if I want to go from 1,000 to 2,000 XRP, do I have to keep coming out of my cash flow business and investing in an XRP? Or can I keep my XRP, provide liquidity, earn an asset in terms of cash flow, and use that cash flow to get more XRP versus coming out of my pocket? Because that opportunity is available. That opportunity is available. Yeah, 120 billion in total value lock. That's the whole DeFi space. There are platforms that have 5 billion in total value lock where you can participate as a liquidity provider and position yourself to take in 0.2% or 0.3% based upon your position in terms of collateral deposit. You can position yourself on platforms that do $22 million a day, a day in transactions. I don't know how much that is, but that feels like a lot. What is 22 million times 30? Is that 6 billion? I have no idea. Is that billion? Miss Crypto Sieges. This guy sitting on me is so funny. <laughs> Somebody's hitting on you? You, you told me that before somebody was hitting on you. Somebody's hitting on this crypto siege on, on social media. But he's like, oh my God. So he's like, send me a pic. I'm like, just look at my Facebook. <laughs> I think this is, oh, so this is 660 million. 660 million a month. So times 12 is 7 billion 7 billion 920 million and right now it's 22 million a day how many tens of million is it going to be next uh in the next 5 years 
How many more tens of million will it be in the next five years? Do you see what I'm saying? I'm wondering if that beats tax-free <laughs> in a Roth IRA. Maybe you do both. Maybe you, you take a small percentage and put it in the Roth and you take the others elsewhere. But I, I feel like participating in a seven billion nine hundred and twenty million dollar platform yearly. You know what I mean? Or right now, music biz Moriarty, that's on one chain. Here shortly, it will be on Flare Networks. I mean, I don't know. You tell me, guys. Does it feel like positioning yourself on a platform that does seven billion nine hundred and twenty million yearly, and you can position yourself by pro by providing liquidity? Celsius right now is not doing it, John, on XRP, right? Position yourself in that zero point three to zero point two percent based upon the collateral that you provide, collateral that you can withdraw and take out at any time, at any time. Feels like, not that there's not risk, there's always smart contract risk in anything. There's always smart contract risk on anything. But it feels like that, that beats Growing a portfolio tax free. It it remember the value of your portfolio in a Roth IRA is completely, listen to me, is completely independent upon the market and its asset appreciation. It's tax free. But if you're in a bear market, What's the value? What's your cash flow? How much are you making on a daily, weekly, and monthly basis? Something to ponder. Something to ponder. Yeah, Music Biz, I have a, a couple of videos. Just check them out on Wanchain, how to get um, interest on your XRP. And again, this is before Flare Network launches, right? Once Flare Network launches, right? My extra P is, is no longer going to be on one chain. Isn't that great? I don't have to ask permission either. I'm not going to be fined for moving it. I'm not going to get a no activity fee. <laughs> I'm not going to get a no activity fee from Finance. I'm taking my assets. You know, there's a saying going on nowadays in the CBI space, which is the citizenship by investment space. There's a saying that says, go to where you're treated best. Well, in the DeFi space, go to where your assets are treated best. They're your assets. You've already paid for them. Go to where your assets are treated best. Yeah, you certainly can. Yeah, I mean, Celsius is a great place, depending on the assets that you hold. That's the that's the fundamental sound place, Music Biz Moriarty, to earn interest. They got over forty assets on there. That they pay a very a very very stable and smooth AP, uh, APY on your assets, right? Well, you don't have to uh, um, uh, deal in DeFi. I always tell people. Um, I believe Celsius is, is the great, the greatest asset to the um, digital asset space ecosystem because not only do they provide yield in a safe way, but they also are expanding the size of the pie and bringing in more people into this digital asset space. Firmly believe it. So if you want to, if you want to begin to learn what it's like to earn crypto on your crypto, you want to begin to learn what it's like to uh, be a lender 
and be a borrower. If you want to begin to see what that's like on crypto, right? You haven't done it before. You've never, you've, you've never lent your crypto. You've never borrowed against your crypto. Celsius is a great place to start. Celsius.network. Celsius.network is a great place. And there's my referral code. If you don't mind using that, that'd be awesome. $400 you deposit. We each earn $50 in Bitcoin for depositing $400. But I think it's a fabulous platform to begin to, to know what it feels like to be a lender of your assets, where a platform says, we want your assets and we'll pay you for depositing the assets. And oh, by the way, if you ever want to borrow against those assets, you can do so at a 1%, 4%, 8% loans, APR, which is a 25% loan to value, 33% loan to value, and a 50% loan to value. We'll let you do that. Hey, and we'll let you do that without a credit check. You, you, without a credit check, you don't have to, you won't have to send in any references. Yeah. You won't have to sit on the other side of some desk with some dude judging you and seeing if you might qualify for their money. You won't have to do that <laughs> with Celsius Network. I love it. That's a great way to start. You get comfortable for there a year or two or three. Then you can begin to dabble in the DeFi space. For sure. For sure, for sure. Hey, Jerry's in the building. What's going on, my friend? Uh, hey, Siege. Will I have to keep equal XRP, equal XRP to Flare? No. In order to provide liquidity collateral, does wanting to use Flare make XRP a no-sell in order to use and leverage the platform to its full extent? Well, I think on the latter part, that second question, I think it's right. That's a personal decision uh, for sure. But no, you do not have to have equal amount of XRP. Right. And so on Flare Networks, there's gonna, the Spark token is um, the, the, the big utility. And then minting your FXRP um, is the other thing um, that you'll be able to do to earn more Spark token. Right. So there's 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 delegating your votes. There's uh, wrapping it in the governance. So those are two ways like risk free. Uh, I believe. And then the other thing, eight weeks after network, Flare Networks launches is you'll be able to mint, which is basically turning your XRP into FXRP. And you're going to get Spark token for that as well. You're going to get Spark token for that as well. And all that means is you're really just turning XRP into FXRP. And so that FXRP can be utilized on uh, Flare Finance, for example, or used on um, uh, Trustline, for example, right? So, But you're going to get Spark token for minting, merely changing that XRP to FXRP, right? Uh, to this agent, if you will. And this agent um, um, collects a fee because uh, they, they provide two and a half times collateral. So it's, it's going to be three ways you can use Spark token, one way with XRP. Um, in the beginning, and then of course that FXRP you can use on um, Trustline and Flare Finance as well, and it's FXRP. Those are going to be a little bit more risky. They're going to be a little bit more risky. That's why you want to be comfortable on DeFi now. What does it look like? It's Flare Finance, right? That's what we're talking providing liquidity. We're talking liquidity pools. We're talking farming, right? We're talking yield farms. Right. And so we got to we got to be comfortable with those. And what is this, that going to look like? What's the risk? What does impermanent loss look like? Those are more riskier. Right. And so we want to get comfortable with what that looks like now. Right. You know, app.sushi.com and um, Polygon. Uh, what is it? Um, Polygon.curve.fi. What is providing liquidity look like? Quickswap.exchange. Right. What does that look like? App.sushi.com. What does it look like to provide liquidity? You know, I, I primarily hang with stable coins. So I primarily stick with providing liquidity in st stable coins. Right. Because, this, you know, there's about a zero, not zero, but about a zero chance of 
and permanent loss there. But while I'm providing liquidity of $500 or $1,000, I'm earning cash in terms of I'm earning an asset that has value to it. So even if the asset is 10 cents, I earn 10 cents for providing $500 in stable coins. I don't lose my $500, but I am earning cash flow daily. For example, what if the asset that you earn is worth a dollar? What if the asset you weren't earning is worth $200? Right, that's the opportunity um, that you have. And so it's going to be interesting to see what Flare Networks is going to, I mean, Flare Finance is going to come up with uh, in terms of their liquidity pairs, right? It's called liquidity pairs. Stable coins are liquidity pairs. Um, XRP and Bitcoin is a liquidity pair. There's more risk of impermanent loss with Bitcoin and XRP in the liquidity pair because they can go up in value and go down in value, and some doesn't always follow the other. Where versus a stable coin, they pretty much do the same thing, right? Go up a little few, one, two, three, whatever go down maybe to 98, right? There's a, a little less, significantly less risk of impermanent loss that way. But the, the, the thing is, do you know what that's like to be a liquidity provider? The great thing is you can start out with, you can start out with $10, $5 a USDC and $5 of USDT, $5 of USDC and $5 of die. And just provide liquidity. See what that looks like. See what it feels like. Maybe you earn some sushi. Maybe you earn some defen. Maybe you earn some pancake swap if you if you want to hang out on the Binance Smart Chain, right? What does that feel like? Yeah, yeah. Flare Finance. The great thing I think about Flight Flare Finance for us is it is that first mover's advantage. Uh, and uh, you know, the platform has to win. It has to win. It has to it has to be able to withstand uh, market crashes. It's going to have to withstand, you know, the, that that code is going to have to stand the test. Is it going to stand the test? Don't know. Yearn Finance today, which I think does seven or nine. Um, let me see something here. How many billions does Yearn Finance? Everybody's heard of Yearn Finance because Yearn Finance was the first asset. was the first asset to, to get to a higher asset valuation than Bitcoin, right? What is it? DeFi. Right? The token, the DeFi, the, 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 the y, YFY token, goodness gracious. Tens of, tens of thousands of dollars, right? Yeah, everybody knows you're in finance because of that. But a lot of people don't know that Yearn Finance does four billion dollars in total value locked, four billion, four billion, and they had a, they had a breach in their code, they had a a mishap, but they survived it. They had a mishap, eleven million dollar, whoops, but they survived because of participation and community support. And then they went on to become this monster. Right. What's going on, Crypto Kahuna? Good to see you, bro. Indeed, it is, man. You got Flare Network, you got Flare Finance. This is going to be a monster. Aloha, Siege. Aloha to you, bro. It really is. Right. That active participation in Flare Network, Hugo has said it time and time again. The participants actively participating, delegating votes, and participating on Flare Networks is going to benefit to the detriment of those who look to put the Spark token. In an IRA, <laughs> in a Roth IRA for tax purposes. <laughs> right? That's what he said. The Spark token holders that utilize it, delegating votes to FTSOs and right, participating in governance, right? Those people who participate are going to benefit greatly as compared to those who still are living in the second grade, hanging out in second grade, doing stuff there. So that's going to be interesting to see. Yeah, Jerry, one of you Yeah, 1.8 on Matic was a great deal, right? It was a great deal. I remember when we did that, got into Polygon.
Uh, that's a great question, Marquise. Do you guys think that when enough people get turned on to crypto and get turned on to residual income, uh, they're going to lock it up and going to be first come, first served? No, I do not. Um, I, I personally don't because I think the ecosystem is too big. And um, I think it's so early. I think it's so early. You know, you're, you're kind of um, you're kind of hitting towards like saturation, like no more yield will be available. And I, I don't I don't I don't see that. I don't see that happening. First of all, I just don't see enough people getting into crypto. Uh, in the next 10 years, I don't see enough people getting into it. And then how many of those going to participate in the yield ecosystem? I don't I don't see it. I think that uh, Celsius will have his hands full. I think a lot of people will gravitate to Celsius and Celsius will have to find a lot of different ways to create yield. He's already said it's not going to be just crypto. He already recognizes there's only a certain amount of places you can tap into in crypto. Uh, and if you're going to grow to 100 million users, which he's looking to grow to, you're going to have to find different ways to get yield. And crypto will as well. <laughs> crypto will find other ways to get yield as well. Why can't you put your NFTs up for collateral and bar against them? They're yours. Right? That's coming as well. All right, guys. Listen, I'm going to wrap it up. It's been an hour. It's good to see you guys. What's your price prediction for Spark AC? What's your price prediction for Spark? I don't have one. I don't. I have no clue. Um, I have zero clue what it's going to be. I and I'm I'm more interested in the the more use cases for spark token versus the price right because i'm going to be participating and delegating uh my votes and participating in the ecosystem so I'm, I'm looking for more ways to use uh the spark token i think asset appreciation will take care of itself i really i really really do uh, but I, and i'm looking to i'm looking at cash flow not asset appreciation i'm looking at cash flow how can i use this spark token to create cash flow and what is what is that going to look like, right? On a daily and weekly basis, cash flow. All right, guys, listen, thank you so much for hanging out. It's been a really, really cool hang. It's always great to hang out with you guys for sure on a late night Friday. Is it Friday? Yeah. On a late night Friday night, I managed to get the two streams in, even though we had an awesome hangout with Crypto Eddie. You guys be sure to look out for that video from Crypto Eddie on the round table around Flare Networks. Again, I felt blessed. Uh, to be a part of that. So many of the of the studs in the space, the studs and the studettes in the space were hanging out. Solomon, Mickey B. Fresh, Darren Moore, Bully, James Rule, XRP, Flare Community, Deep Space Flare, all the FTOs. It was a cool hang. All right, guys, listen, I am going to end this stream like I do all of my streams and remind you guys of this. Old money doesn't want you to win. But that's okay, though, because you and I are already winning. Have a great night, guys. I'll talk to you soon. See ya. Bye. Bye. <laughs>